We're going to talk today about ROI settings for both range and practice mode with the MLM2 Pro connector. So we're going to open up our connector and I'm going to go through how I have Samsung Flow, my screen mirroring app, set up here. First, we're going to rename the screen sharing window to Samsung Flow. And then we're going to update the path for the auto open feature, which automatically opens the app when you select your device. And here's the path for Samsung Flow. It was hard to find, but I found mine under Windows C, Program Files, Windows Apps, and then I copy it as the path, and I'll just paste that in this slot here. Okay, so we'll select our device, and when I do, it'll automatically open up Samsung Flow. I've got to click on the Smart View. That will get me to control the tablet. I'm using a Samsung Galaxy Tab A6 Lite. We'll go into practice mode first. I'm going to show this in both practice mode and in simulation mode. So if you use the range, I'll show both. I'm just connecting to the tablet and to practice mode at the moment here. In practice mode, we're going to select that bullseye. that gives us those ROIs. And we'll just check the metrics really quick. I'm going to need club speed, ball speed, Launch angle, launch direction, spin rate, spin access, and then I add carry, inside carry. I'm going to turn impact vision on. That's how I normally play. And then it does have a light mode and a dark mode. I haven't tested which ROIs read better. I don't think there's a difference since it converts to grayscale in the programming. But let's um, let's select it and click on the ROIs, and this is where it's going to want us to define it. It says you should take a shot first. Let's just quick throw the boxes around and talk about, you know, errors that happen and how this really works. I'm just going to throw the boxes on the data points here really quick. And as I do this, notice I'm being pretty loose with the squares around the boxes. We're going to go over how those squares affect the readings and show you some of the errors that it creates. So let's select our Android, restart, and connect to the API, and let's hit a shot and just take a look and see what we get from those initial boxes we created. So just keep in mind, when we hit a shot, it reads on our episode, it sends it to the tablet. The connector is then using that image to scan and come up with the numbers and sends it into GS Pro. So as we look at this first shot here, I've got what I see right away is 6449 on the spin. It's sent into GS Pro, um, 5,448 for the spin. So that's already wrong. And let's kind of zoom in and take a look at our initial ROIs. So it's only going to read half of that six, which is why I came up with a five. Um, when I do these ones on practice mode, I'm going to go as close to that edge without getting any of the black or the photo. And then for example, here, I'm going to show you what would happen if I don't include like the RPM, the program is going to get rid of like the ASCII numbers, which is a programming thing. Uh, the degree symbol, the mile per hour, there's some error correction in there, but let's just go through, set it up. I'll show you some different scenarios. Select again. Let's hit another shot. So we've readjusted the windows. And we're hitting another shot. So this one, I've got a little higher ball speed than my last one. Um, spin is similar. You know, surprisingly, it read the shot pretty well, read the numbers pretty well. But let's look at the ROIs. Ball speed 101, my initial box, too small. So let's get that corrected. Include the mile per hour. Um, as that box expands and contracts, a, the error handling is, is meant to sort of handle that. Let's hit another shot. We just verified those. They look good. I'm going to grab a wedge. I want to hit something with high spin. I really want to see what that spin number <laughs> Can get to to see if our box can contain it so i got a 60 degree wedge swung hard yep i got high spin so we're sitting in the 11,359 as the range and if you look my box that i initially had 
is not enough to cover and it's touching that one. I don't like that. So let's go into the gray, no one. And let's go just outside the RPM. So the 11,000s, that's as big as the spin's gonna get. Um, you shouldn't see it much higher than that, hardly ever. And you're starting to see kind of a natural line down the middle of the practice screen here on the edge of that 1159. Now, for example, let's hit another shot here. Um, right now, all the numbers are inside the blue boxes. We've adjusted, you know, spin. We've adjusted ball speed. I'm going to hit one out to the right here and mess with the launch angle. So that should be way to the right. 14 degree launch, right? Okay, it's a bigger launch than what I had. So when you're hitting it down the middle and you've got one degree launch, now we've got a three digit launch to the right there. Let's widen these boxes. Our initial boxes were just, you know, were not enough to capture the data. So maybe it got the first shot right, but then somebody hits one out to the right and now it's not reading it. So first thing I do when I have a misread is I check my boxes. I'll look at the ROIs. I'll come in here. I'll click verify and see, hey, did is there actually a misread in the connector or are my boxes off? So let's select again. I'm going to grab a driver here. This is the other instance where club head speed, I've had that box too small before. So let's get something with our higher club head speed. Over 100 is kind of what I'm looking at. Here we've got a 101 club head speed. Also gives me a 140 ball head speed, ball speed. So that's a good one to hit and then check your RIs. You could have just started off with big boxes, right? And then reduced them down. But I'm just trying to draw the point that checking these in each of their areas is important to see how big the number can actually get. Um, I'm gonna include the mile per hour. And again, I'm starting to get a uniform box size across all these spots. We don't want to include words like club head speed, ball speed, launch angle. Um, it is really looking to identify the numbers and drop off the you know degree symbols and the mile per hours so let's just hit a shot here it looks like we've got it all set up and make sure those are reading correctly one last time okay so shot registered looks like it's going in just fine we'll double check the rois and then i want to show you something else that's equally important and that's window size and pixel size so you can see how many pixels there are here it's pixelated i've actually got the roi window set to about a medium size right now and i'm going to show you here what it looks like if your roi window is smaller and what i mean by roi window is your screen share window is smaller when you initially set up the rois so if you have a screen share app and you've you've made that window nice and small so that you can save room on your screen or see multiple things at once. And you hit, uh, set your ROIs the, the initial time, it's going to take that small window size. See how pixelated these are. And we'll set the boxes here and do a verify as if we would the initial time. And that doesn't mean they're going to read incorrectly, but they are way more pixelated and the chances of them reading correctly are smaller. So in this chance, in this case, it, it read them correctly. But let me show you something. So when you save and close, each time you open up your device, it's going to open up at the previous size that you saved your ROIs. So as we open it up here and click you know, play as if it were a new session, you'll notice it won't let me change this window size. As I click and drag, it just resnaps. So that's how it tells or keeps and saves the ROI boxes that you've drawn is it fixes the window size to whatever size it was. And it says the ROI boxes are in this position. So I'm going to open up the window again here. We're going to make our screen as big as possible, our tablet screen. And then we're going to open up the ROI box and click reset. But we're going to hit reset after we've made the window large. Because when you hit reset, that's the size of the window it is. You can see how sharp and crisp the 75 is now that it is as big as my entire window. If I make it small, and reset now zoom in look how pixelated it is so you want the window as large as possible high resolution so that the screen reader can read the numbers correctly so what i would do is maximize the window then hit reset then set your rois 
I'll repeat that here very quickly. So I've maximized the window. Then I've clicked into my ROIs and clicked reset and I'm dragging the new boxes around. You'd go through that whole box fitting process. And once you get them in the right place, you're ready to hit a shot. We'll do one final test here before we switch over to the range mode, which I know a lot of you use. And I'll go through kind of how these same sort of settings affect the range mode. So shot registered right into GS Pro. The other thing you notice on the screen is all those red lines. There's there's error checking in the connector now. So when these do misread, look how crisp those are when it's large. And that, and that just really helps with the quality of the read. But the error checking, whenever you have a, a value out of range, it's not sending the shot in any longer, like when you go to a menu or a pop-up. So that's great. All right, we'll switch over to range mode. So you go into your settings. I'm going to click range. And a lot of you on iOS are using this because you have a pop-up on the Android in the practice mode. Um, the numbers here are smaller and they're not as well defined for me, but I'll do my elevation and I'll do high definition just to make sure I'm getting the highest quality numbers I can get. And so here's what range mode looks like. I'm going to get it all selected and go in to the connector here and we'll get, get hit the ROIs. It does want me to hit a shot first. It's kind of, um, I'm going to hit a shot and show you where the boxes should be. So we'll get this window a little bit smaller and then I'm going to hit a shot and we'll set up the ROI boxes here quick. The left to right range for these boxes is not as kind of unknown as it is in the practice mode. Although you can see it, you kind of have white lines between where you can, tell where the boxes should be. So as we look here, um, I will first, I'm going to check stationary for my camera. We want that. I'm going to turn grid lines off. And then we need to check our metrics. I also turn sound off. These are the metrics you want. Same as you're having in practice mode. We need ball speed, club speed, launch angle, launch direction, spin access, and spin rate. And then you can add whichever else is you, other ones you want. But as I go in here, we're going to reset the ROIs and you're going to draw the boxes. We don't want to include words like club speed, and I'll show you that here later. Um, you do want to include mile per hour and the degree symbol, because if you cut the mile per hour off on, say, 70, then maybe you need that range or that box width for when the club speed is 110. So in this mode, I've kind of just gone between the white lines and around the numbers, but try not to include too much blank space if I don't have to. So it's sort of as neatly put around or uniformly put around. You can see here, I'm not getting any data. Uh, it says invalid data on the launch angle. It's 24 degrees, it's probably reading it as 240, um, just because it's so pixelated. And that's because my range window is, you know, my tablet window is so small on the right. Again, this is where we want to maximize that window before we set our ROI. So I'm going to maximize the window, go back over to that ROI screen, and with it maximized to start, I'm going to hit reset. And I'm going to zoom in. You can see that's a much cleaner less pixelated number still not as clean as practice mode but it's much better than when i have that screen you know super small so we'll zoom back in set the boxes and we'll just do a verify with that button up top i don't have to hit a new shot every time you can just hit verify um and we've got good numbers here so it looks like everything's reading which is great that's what we want save close and let's hit a shot and i've got the connector window over to the top apologize for that i hit one to the right you can see it registering in both the range and in gs pro a lot of you play in a range mode this is what you're familiar with or what you're used to we'll hit one more i'll hit one kind of left and range mode picked it up. You can't really see the screen. Apologize for that. But 
it came into both both shots looked like the same ball flight to me and the numbers are actually all reading correctly so let's look at these ROIs, what mistakes kind of people are making when they are setting them up, you know, if any. Um, I'm just running through a check here. They all check out. They're all reading right. So that's great. But sometimes these boxes, if they include club speed, I'll do a verify here with club speed. You can immediately see club speed's reading 87 now instead of 78. So it's important these boxes cover the right stuff. I've seen it where... You know, you've got the box too far over one end or the other, and it sort of does that same thing. We can do a test here, and I'll drag across that white line. It's still reading 78, but I think in other cases it, it hasn't. On the left side, there's been some misreads. Um, if you get the box, like, way too small, sometimes it can misread. So let's just try, and I apologize if these all read perfectly, then 79. So that box is too small when you hit it, see 79. And it's just kind of reading that mile per hour, I'm guessing. So if you have a misread, come in here, click your ROIs, hit verify and see, hey, did it? if I rearrange this box, does the misread change? That's at 78 and a half there, right? So, and there we got 78. So rearrange the box, hit the verify button. And when you get it reading correctly, Leave it there, and next time you have a misread, come check it again. After a while, I think you can get these dialed into a place where you're getting you know, good reads 99% of the time, which is the goal, right? Once we've got good readings going into GS Pro, it's the best experience out there. I can't thank ETN enough for all the hard work he's done for putting into this connector. If you guys have time to click the donate button at the top of the connector app and send ETN a tip for all of his hard work, I'm sure it would be much appreciated, although he said repeatedly that he does not expect it. If you guys have any questions, comments, would like to see something in a future video, please let me know. Shoot me a message, comment below. Um, I'm trying to be active in the community and help others as best I can. Here's a few shots to close the video. You can see it working in the range and in GS Pro. What a wonderful experience. Thanks, everybody.